All right, well, today's been... <laughs> this flies everywhere. The other day in science class, we were doing uh, lemon batteries. And uh, it's been something on the internet where some guy has got like a, a lemon, some wires plugged into it, and then he runs the wires into his phone, and then the indicator light shows up saying that the phone is now being charged by the lemon. And you might think, oh, that's ridiculous. How could you get... How can you get electricity out of a lemon? Well, you can actually, but not a lot, as we found out. We decided to put it to, th to the test in science class, where we try to make the biggest lemon cell battery ever. And the way you do it is pretty simple. You get a lemon and you've got to bruise it. Um, the way you get the energy to happen, the, the way to make the battery is you need to have two different metals that could be is usually copper and zinc, those are the favorites. But uh, we had uh, iron nails and we also had um, copper wire, which I cut off and we stuck them into the lemons. So, so the two uh, bits of metal, once it's been plunged inside the lemon, um, they don't touch. And the, the purpose of the lemon there is actually to provide the electrolyte that allows a current to flow between the two metals, such that electrons can be exchanged and all kinds of business like that and but they don't flow very well unless you bruise the the, the, the piece of fruit so you get your fruit um, I think citrus works uh, well we found that it worked with lemons of course as per tradition but uh, we also found that oranges also work pretty good we got about half a volt out of a single orange so they were pretty good but you've got to uh, mash that because the structure the inside structure of a fruit is they have, you know, if you have eaten, eaten a piece of orange or mandarin, they have this kind of like macro cellular structures, meaning like there are clumps of, you know, fruit flesh and stuff like that, which doesn't allow the juices to move around inside of the fruit, obviously. But to make the battery work, we need that flow of electrons or, or electrolytes. And so you mash it up. So we uh, rolled it pretty much like you would roll a rolling pin for some um, dough and then we uh, you know pushed it and some of the kids punched them which was a lot of, a lot of fun and uh, we stuck them in but when we added all the lemons together we only got a maximum of six volts but when we measured smaller sections of the of the um, circuit let's say you know, I think we had like 20 maybe 40 uh, bits of fruit in total um, 20 uh, 40 bits of fruit in total uh, but we, when we only measured like, you know, four lemons, maybe six lemons at a, at a time, we got about three volts. And you would think that if you keep stacking them all together in series, as per the theory, as you add more things in the same electrical path, one end on end, the voltages should add up. And yet, we only got a maximum of six. That was odd. And then we, um, the other goal we had in mind is like, okay, well, we can get six volts. Now, a ordinary USB cable uh, from your laptop, I'm told, provides about five volts of power. And it also provides uh, 500 milliamps of current. So we know that we can ch charge a mobile phone using the USB cable from our laptops. So we need to match that figure. We got the voltage, check. Um, but then the trick was the current. So we measured small bits of the, of the uh, circuit and we got around 30 milliamps. We needed 500. So what did we do? Well, the next thing we tried was to break up the giant circuit, which had the, the one big series circuit of lemons and oranges. And we put them into parallel circuits or parallel loops of six. And the theory goes is that if you add uh, multiple power sources together in parallel, the current should add up, but the voltage would be the same. But interestingly, when we tested it, we got a total current of 30 or 40 milliamps. Again, it didn't increase. So my thinking is perhaps, there's two, two sources of error I think that, that uh, could have been introduced. So one of them might be that uh, our class was not experienced with wiring it up correctly. I mean, it's the first time we did electronics in terms of creating a, a circuit path. So there could have been a, a mistake somewhere where we had two iron nails linked together on a wire uh, instead of going to opposites, like an um, iron nail to a copper and then a copper to an iron nail and so forth. 
So that could have happened. Well, the other thing I'm thinking is that perhaps what went on is that the, we talked about how we crushed up the bits of fruit and we bruised them. And I'm thinking that perhaps what, we, what was actually limiting our current flow was how readily the electrolytes were able to move throughout the actual pieces of fruit. So it doesn't matter how many we had of them, if there's only a limited amount of movement for those electro electrolytes to carry the charge and distribute them through the circuit, then it's kind of like a bottleneck. And I think it's probably the most likely, likely culprit of the uh, lower than expected current. Oh, well, interesting thoughts.